welcome to using Creo. I'm going to show you how to make a revolved part um, based off of this little weight that we've made in the previous episode. Um, this was just done with some simple sort of pull methodology uh, with the with the pull feature and um, at this point what we're going to do is we're going to do the pull angular and I'm going to show you how to do this. Now one of the things that I had problems with first of all with uh, Creo was is that I was trying to define everything perfectly the first time right off the get-go and yes you can do that but it seems like an awful lot of work when really what you should be doing is roughing out the shape and then you can start pulling the features to the right dimensions that you need um, afterwards so without further ado I'm just gonna start showing you guys how I did this little revolve clip so first of all we need a work plane and the work plane I would like to have is on the axis of this weight. So we can do this on the axis. You hit that and you notice that the axis comes up and that we have the W, V, and U axis. So we want it on the axis and we want it on the U axis and we'll hit OK and it creates the axis that we need or the axis, the plane that we need. So I'm going to click on that plane and I'm just going to start drawing some lines and arcs. Now the way this one part that I have is shaped I'm going to just use the arrow key. If you use, like, say, the left key or the right key, you'll notice that it rotates at about 45 degrees, so you can get a good idea of about where you need to have things. So I'm just going to kind of roughly put the mouse where I need to, bring the arrow back, and that's where I'm going to start the line. That was the center of the weight. And I'm just going to rough out the shape that I have for this part that, I, that I'm going to create. You'll notice that I'm not concerned about where the center of the uh, the part is, and the reasoning behind that is is that it, it's caused me too many issues to try to figure out where everything should be, and like I said, I'm just going to rough out the shape, make the revolve, and then I can modify the the sizes as I need them to be sized. So first thing I do is that once you've created some of these sketches, you'll notice I can grab or select on that uh, line. And I can say, hey, wait a minute, I want it to come up and along there, and I also want it to be just off the edge of that and vertical. Sometimes it's a little bit difficult to get all this to happen properly, so it's a little poking around, but you can drag the lines to the to the length that you need. And select that line, and then we're going to come down here. And I'm going to do that angle again. And you can see that this is going to make for a circle that is a little too long. So what I did is I can select on that line and I can drag it so that it's you know a specific distance or like a smaller distance. So I just want something that will be slightly smaller that will fit into that. Oh, and I forgot one thing too is that I want to actually have some different uh, geometry here. Um, it's sort of like a little pin in the center. So what I'm going to do here is I'll just rough out the pin, at least the edges of the pin. And we'll select on that guy there and we'll drag him up. And again, you can notice that things kind of bounce around and it's hard to you know, necessarily get everything perfect. So you can right click on something and go, hey, you know what? I don't want that part. Um, so let's delete that. And the delete function actually turns out to be just off the screen where you can't see it here. I'll click on a line up here and we click on it and you'll notice that there's delete 2D. This is one thing that I find kind of confusing is that I can't hit Control X. I can't hit Delete. That will not get rid of this line. You actually have to come in here and right click and hit Delete 2D. I find that kind of annoying, but um, you know, it's one of those things where you just kind of got to get used to it. So let's just say that this line, we need to actually break with that line. There's ways that you can do this here. You want to split 2D is what you want. So you want to split that line and you want to split it right there. And now you'll notice that there's two lines. So now we have that split edge. Let's hit the checkbox, Just click on that, right click, delete that 2D. And then what we can do is we can take this line and drag him out until, now you'll notice what I did here is that I dragged this part or this, this tip out. Um, and as I go past the line here it doesn't actually you know give me any sort of inference but what I can do is I can come up to it really quickly and then as I go away from it it will it'll lock me right into being right at the edge of that so let's just go this through this again I'm gonna drag that back now I want this point to be uh, right at the bottom of that line at 90 degrees 
So let's grab that point. We're going to drag it, and you notice I come up there, and suddenly that inference line is there, and it locks me into place. So now I know I have that line where I want it to be. At this point, let's just create another edge line just to finish everything off, and we've got a closed off profile. And finally, finally, we're into the pull angular. So at this point, I want to pull this, or I want to revolve this around that axis. So we can do that and we'll just grab onto the outside and we'll rotate it around and that's perfect. And once you come up here, you'll notice that it will snap to like 359 or whatever you want. This is 360. Type that in if it doesn't snap in properly and we'll say that that's okay. Now, at this point I find, again, this is one of those things where you want to kind of get rid of that sketch. It doesn't really help you out a whole lot. So come up here, delete that plane. And then what you have is that second part. So now we have that second part at least roughed out a little bit. Um, I'll show you, it's got to change a little bit here. We still got to make a couple of cuts, but I want it to be a different color is that I can come in here. I can go onto the widget. I can right click and down in here, you will have part properties and within pro part properties, you'll have the appearance and you can change the color. So the part color, let's just make that a, a yellow. No, I think I'll go for red. And we'll close that off. And now we've got the red part just as we need it. Now, I'm going to do a few little modifications on this part. But what I'm going to start with here is that I still need to make a couple of cuts. So I need to create a rectangle plane. And I'm going to use this rectangle as a cut because we need like a little slot that we need to uh, basically place a, uh, a strap through. And I'll show you how those, all this works here in, in a few moments. But in the meantime, we need to cut about there. And again, I'm just roughing out the dimensions that we need here. These are nothing that's going to be uh, set in stone because one of the nice things about this is that you can modify it quite easily. Now I'm going to create two points and I want there to be an axis right about here. Now, why do I want to have that axis? I actually want to mirror this uh, rectangle. So how I mirror the rectangle is, is that I click on one element and then if I hold the shift key it's going to let me select the rest of these elements so now I've got a selection set up and you can come into the not modified 2d is it in modify 2d quite possibly there it is mirror so at mirror the elements well I guess this the pre-selection was kind of pointless so you do the post selection is you shift control and hit all those and then hit the middle mouse button and that defines all the elements that you want um, and at this point, you can choose two points to create the mirror um, just to make sure that I had everything right. I created that axis. So I'm just going to say two points and choose two points on that axis here and here. That looks pretty good. And we're going to say OK. And it created a mirror of that geometry as we need it. And I need now we're in the active part and this active part is uh, the red piece. And you can tell by the green edges. So if I make a cut to this part, it's not actually going to cut into this part. And that's a good thing in the sense that if I do this and I want it to cut away that extra geometry, and I pull it way down past the, the weight, you can see that the weight is not being cut by this operation. And we'll say OK. And again, just like I have in the past is I delete this plane, which then takes or gets rid of all of the extra stuff that I don't need, the, the sketch that's going to cause me issues. So and now we have this part. Um, I had mentioned that there was some problems with creating a fillet. Um, and the reason with that was the order in which you select things. So let's just create a fillet. And the first thing that I did is I went up in here and I wanted to create this, that little edge right about there. Let's say about that. Now at this point you can choose all these edges to create fillets and you'll notice that it comes down and what it does is if it sees a tangent edge it's going to come down and it's going to create that fillet but then when I come down here where I want the fillet it kind of makes an ugly fillet and then I select there and I end up in this circle where I'm waiting for it to, to solve that fillet and it becomes a bit of a problem. And you can see it came up with the solution but it, it's you know uh, it's kind of ugly. So. This is part of the thing where selecting the right parts for a fillet at first is really important. So I'm going to hit Control Z. And what I probably should have done for the fillet is start out with this guy here. 
and we'll lock them in at that radius. Uh, 0.8 seems to be a bit much. We'll or 0.08, 0 0.06. That looks pretty good. And at this point, let's add the fillets to where we want them to be. And if I select on that line, it's not going to have as big of an issue. And it makes a much cleaner fillet, as you can see. And that was all just because of the selection order that I was uh, having for the for the fillet. So at that point, you know, just be careful. If you find fillets aren't working, always feel free to exit out of that or get rid of the geometry and start again. So I'm just going to create those rounds or fillets as we need them. That looks pretty good. I kind of want these sharp edges are fine. I might actually take that guy down at the bottom and get it so it's nice and round, but that's pretty much the way I want this part to look. So now we have that, we're going to hit the checkbox and we've got everything set up. So now we have the part so it looks pretty good. Now we're on the final stretch for this and we'll finish this part up next week where we're going to stretch and pull it so it fits perfectly into that hole and looks exactly the way we want it to. So hopefully all of this has helped you out. Any comments or questions, leave them in the comments below and hopefully this has helped you out. I'll talk with you guys next week.